Hi seedlings and saplings and climbers, it's good to be with you today. I hope you're well. I hope you're looking forward to Easter. It'll be great to see some of you at our Easter egg story trail on the Saturday before Easter. I've made sure there's learned me lots of chocolate, okay? So I hope to see you there. Now, Good News Club today, we're thinking about our King Jesus and what it means uh, that he's come for us and lots of things that we're seeing through the eyes of his friend Peter, aren't we? Today, I want to begin by asking you to think about a time that maybe, maybe you did something wrong. Maybe you did something wrong and there was a punishment. You might be able to think of something, maybe a little thing, maybe a bigger thing. And there was a punishment. There was something that you had to do or something you had to miss out on because that thing had happened. Maybe you were gonna miss out on something you like at home. Maybe, I don't know, missing out on TV time or missing out on a, a snack you like or something like that. Can you think of that time? Imagine how you would feel if you'd done something wrong and there was a punishment and you knew you were wrong, you knew you deserved the punishment and somebody else said, hey, I'll take the punishment for you. I will take your punishment. How would you feel about that? I, I suppose the first thing you'd think is, yes, that's great, isn't it? Thank you. I'd love you to take my punishment so I don't have to do the punishment. That would be brilliant. And then maybe you'd start to think, oh, but oh, I, I don't know how I feel about that. How do I feel about this person who hasn't done anything wrong taking the punishment for me who has done something wrong? Maybe you'd think that a little, little bit as well. And then maybe after that, you might start to think, oh, is that even allowed? Is it allowed for somebody else to take my punishment when I've done something wrong and they haven't? Will my mum or my dad or my teacher or whoever it is at home, will that person allow that? Well, think about that a little bit more uh, in a few minutes time. Today, we're gonna look at maybe the most important part of the story of the history of the world. The most important part of the story of the Bible, the most important part of the story of Jesus. And it's the time that he died for us. You might remember, if you were with us at Good News Club last week, um, Jesus had been arrested and he was taken to the, the leaders of God's people in the temple. The high priest was a man called Caiaphas. And uh, Peter wasn't doing very well, was he? Peter was saying that he didn't even know Jesus. Well, today, where we begin uh, our reading in the Bible, um, the, the leaders in the temple have decided they can't really do anything. They're not allowed to do what they want to do. They can't put Jesus to death. And so they're going to send Jesus to the Roman governor, whose name is Pilate. Now, we've got quite a long part of the Bible to read this morning. Um, and I thought what we'd do is I'm not going to read it all because it is quite long and it might depend how good we are at reading and how good we are at listening, or whether you want to read the whole thing. So I'll tell you what, if you're someone who likes reading and is good at reading, maybe you're a little bit older, uh, why don't you stop the video in just a minute and why don't you read this part of the Bible in a Bible that you have at home? Or you could find uh, the Bible on the internet if that doesn't work. We're going to read in John's Gospel, the book of John, chapter 18. We're going to start reading at verse 28 and we're going to read all the way through to chapter 19 and verse... Well, I can't remember. Verse 6, I think it is. Let me just check. I can't turn the page in my Bible. Hang on a minute. Oh, dear. Chapter 19, verse... Um, no, longer than that. Chapter 19, verse 37. So that's quite a long way. John chapter 18, verse 28 to chapter 19, verse 37. If you're good at reading or you like reading or having someone read to you, that'll be no problem at all. And you'll hear the whole story of why Jesus was put to death on the cross and what happened. But if that's a bit much, well, I'm just going to read some of the parts of the story to work out what was going on. The first bit I'm going to read is where the reading starts in chapter 18, verse 28. And it says, Then the Jewish leaders took Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. That's what I said a minute ago, really, isn't it? The, the Roman governor is this man called Pilate. And the, uh, the authorities from the temple, the important people from the temple, took Jesus there. In verse 29, it says, Pilate came out to them and he asked them, What charges are you bringing against this man? What charges are you bringing against this man? That just means, what has he done wrong? 
You're telling me he's done something wrong. What has he done? Some, what has he done wrong? Uh, they don't really have much to say about that because he hasn't done anything wrong, has he? So Pilate ends up having this conversation with Jesus, asking him questions and trying to work out why are you here? What's what are those people saying that you've done? In verse 33, Pilate went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Are you the king? And Jesus sort of says, well, that's what you said, isn't it? You're right about that. Let me read you what happens a little bit later. Halfway through verse 38, uh, Pilate went out, out of the palace to where the people were. And he said to them, I find no basis for a charge against Jesus. I, I don't think he's done anything wrong, is what Pilate is saying. And in verse 39, he says, but it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? And they shouted back, no, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now, Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. So Pilate says, Jesus has done nothing wrong. I can't find anything he's done wrong. But at this time of year, I always release one prisoner to you. That's kind of a tradition they have. So do you want Jesus, who's done nothing wrong? Or do you want this man, Barabbas? Says he's taken part in an, in, in an uprising. Elsewhere in the Bible, we read that Barabbas was a murderer. Shall I release to you Jesus? Shall we, shall we let him out of prison? Shall we let him go free? He's done nothing wrong. Or do you want a murderer to go free, to be free on the streets tonight? And they say, no, we don't want Jesus. We want Barabbas. It's a crazy thing for the crowd to say. Let me read from the beginning of chapter 19. It's the next bit of the story. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they slapped him in the face. Once more, Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. The soldiers are being really, really unkind to Jesus, aren't they? They're being really unfair to him and they're beating him and saying mean things to him. And then Pilate comes out again and says, there's nothing here. Jesus has done nothing wrong. What's going on? But then in chapter six, partway through, he says it again. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. That's the third time Pilate has said, I've questioned him, I've, I've asked him everything I need to ask him, and there's no reason for you to put him to death. He's done nothing wrong. It says in verse 12, Pilate tried to set Jesus free. But the crowd, the crowd from the, the temple, the, the leaders of God's people, they kept shouting, no, you can't let him go. You mustn't let him go. If you do, you're no friend of Caesar. And Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. It's a silly thing for them to say. It doesn't make any sense. So let me read to you what happens next. Partway through chapter 19, verse 14. Here is your king, Pilate said to the people. But they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priests answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. Pilate gave up, didn't he? He said again and again, this man's done nothing wrong. But in the end, he sentenced Jesus to death. He gave, them, he gave Jesus to the people and said, take him away and kill him. Just one more bit I'm going to read in the story. It says they took Jesus to a place called um, the Skull. And in chapter 19, verse 18, it says there, they crucified him and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. They nailed him to a cross, didn't they? And two other people too. The two other people were really bad men who were put to death. Even that's bad enough, isn't it? But they put Jesus to death and he had done nothing wrong. Do you see 
one of the most important things for us to understand in this story, I've said it so many times now, had Jesus done anything wrong? Did he deserve to die? No, he definitely didn't, did he? He had done nothing wrong. He shouldn't have been arrested. He shouldn't have been treated the way he was. He definitely should not have been put to death. And that's what happens. If you do read the story in your Bible or you ask somebody to read it to you, one other thing you'll see that I haven't really pointed out very much as I've read parts of it is that all the way along, Jesus is in control. He's being treated so badly, isn't he? It's so unfair. But again and again, Jesus is in control. In fact, Jesus says he must die. He says it's God's plan, it's God's will for Jesus to go to die. And so even though it's so unfair, all the way along, Jesus says, no, I'm definitely going to die. This is what I've come to do. So he doesn't deserve to die, but he chooses to die as he obeys his father. Now, there's one more thing I want us to think about in that story. We've seen some really big things, haven't we? There's one more thing, and it's to do with what I asked you at the beginning. Who was it who was set free? And who was it who was punished? Jesus was punished, wasn't he? Though he didn't deserve to be. Who was set free? Who wasn't punished? Do you remember in the story? Barabbas. Barabbas was a, a really bad man, someone who'd done some terrible things. We don't know very much about him, but he deserved to be locked up, didn't he? He was a dangerous man. And the people said, no, free Barabbas, release Barabbas to us, let him go free. And that's what happened. And that shows to us something really important about the story of Jesus. It just is a, a picture for us of what happens. Jesus doesn't deserve to die. Barabbas does. And they swap, don't they? Jesus goes to die and Barabbas goes free. I asked you at the beginning, how would it feel for somebody to take the punishment you deserve? Well, Jesus took the punishment Barabbas deserved. And actually, Jesus took the punishment that you and I deserve. In the Bible, lots of times, um, God provides somebody to, um, to suffer, to take a punishment instead of somebody else. In the craft you've got today, there's some examples of that. Uh, way back in the history of God's people, do you remember the Passover? Uh, when the, uh, the people of God were about to be freed from slavery in Egypt uh, and uh, the eldest son in every house died, except where the people of God painted the blood of a lamb on their doors. The lamb died instead of the oldest son in that household. Uh, even before that, in the days of Abraham, uh, God tested Abraham and he said, um, take your son, your only son who you love, and sacrifice him on the altar. And Abraham thought, what on earth? This is such a strange thing for God to ask me to do. But OK, God, if you ask me to do it, I'll do it. And he took him and he built a fire and he was just about to put his only son to death. And God said, no, don't do that. And God provided a ram instead. And the ram was sacrificed instead of Isaac. Those just point us forward to Jesus, just like Barabbas points us forward to Jesus. Jesus died instead of Barabbas. Jesus died instead of you and me. We deserve to die because we ignore God. We disobey God. We reject God. We try to live our own way. We deserve to die and Jesus doesn't. But Jesus died on the cross for people like you and me and even Barabbas, if he, put his, if he put his trust in Jesus. Jesus died in our place. How does that make you feel? That if you trust in Jesus, he takes your punishment? Well, the same sort of things we said earlier, right? First of all, it makes us say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for taking the punishment that we deserve, a punishment that we couldn't get out of, a punishment that would mean death. Thank you, Jesus. And we should always, always, always say thank you to Jesus for that. Second, well, we might think, oh, goodness, like, I don't know if how I feel about that. How do I feel that Jesus takes a punishment that he doesn't deserve? But the story shows us, doesn't he, that Jesus chose to do that. Jesus wanted to do that because he loves us and he wants us to be free. He wants us to live and his love for us meant that he died for us. So we don't need to feel bad about it. We don't need to feel guilty about it. Jesus has chosen to die in our place. And the third thing we might think is, well, is that allowed? 
is it fair for Jesus to take my punishment and me to go free? Is that allowed? Would it be allowed if, if it happened at school or, in, or at home? Well, for that, I have to say to you, listen to what happens next in the story. Next time we meet, actually on Easter Sunday, when Jesus rose from the dead, it shows us that God allowed it. God was pleased that Jesus took the punishment you and I deserve. So we're free. We'd love to see uh, if you can manage that craft. It's a bit of a, it's, we've got some cutting and sticking and folding and colouring. And it shows um, how Jesus um, dies in our place, dies in your place and my place if we trust in him. I'd love to see it after church on Sunday on Zoom. And soon we'll be able to see you in real life um, in some church services. Why don't we pray now and thank God uh, uh, for Jesus dying in our place. Let's pray, shall we? Father God, we thank you that Jesus was prepared to die even though he didn't deserve it. We thank you that he chose to die. He was determined to die so that we don't have to, so that we can go free. It was so unfair what happened to Jesus and we're sorry that that was needed. But we thank you that Jesus took the punishment we deserve so that we can be free and so that we can live with you forever. So please help us always to be thankful and please help us to trust in Jesus every day of our lives. Amen. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.